That's got to be the most fun you can have with your pants on right there. All right, been out here shooting the uh, Chris Vector a little bit today. This is the carbine version. Got a 16 inch barrel with a pinned uh, fake suppressor on there, which I know is kind of bogus, but for the NFA stuff, that's kind of part of you know the way we have to, to let this ride for now. Uh, this is an excellent candidate for an SBR. It's a 45 ACP, uh, feeds from a 20, actually a 30 shot magazine. You take a standard uh, Glock Model 21 magazine and there's an extension that drops on it and uh, you can make a 30 round magazine out of a Model 21. So you get 30 rounds of 45 ACP. Now the reason that Chris chose the 45 is because they figure if they could tame the 45 in full automatic, then they could tame just about any pistol cartridge. Uh, traditionally, like the Thompson submachine gun, uh, you know, those things on full automatic really generate a lot of recoil and they're very difficult to control. Uh, this particular gun on full automatic, of course, is very easy to control because of the unique operation of the bolt mechanism. The bolt actually rides down and to the rear and that helps mitigate the recoil forces. Instead of driving those recoil forces directly back into your shoulder, it drives them downward helping to keep the muzzle flip down and to keep you from feeling as much recoil in your shoulder. Um, very interesting setup. You've got a safety right here on the side of the gun that can be um, activated from either hand, completely ambidextrous. It's got a folding mechanism all right, so the stock folds. And of course, um, in an SBR form, the barrel's much shorter. Very, very handy setup uh, in an SBR form. Uh, we'll likely get one of those out in a future video to run for you guys. Uh, the guns have backup iron sights, like you see here. So you got iron sights. Uh, this particular one has been outfitted with an EOTech. So we got us a nice basic uh, standard EOTech. It's not a night vision version, uh, just a standard EOTech. Um, the operation of the gun's pretty straightforward. You got Picatinny rails on the top of the receiver and on the bottom. And you can see I've added a forward grip here on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and break the gun down uh, for you while I'm talking here. You got a couple of pins right here. Of course, make sure the firearm's empty. One interesting uh, thing about this people need to know is that it does have a loaded chamber indicator and a way that you can check the chamber. Simply pull the charging handle to the rear just enough to go over to uh, you know 90 degrees and look and all it does is it cheats the bolt back just far enough to see if there's anything in it or not. So the bolts all the way forward. We're going to go ahead and push both the takedown pins out. Got this one here. Sometimes I can be a little tight. That's okay. Normally this one near the bottom is kind of tight. So we've got this one right here we're going to pull out. can use the other pin to cheat it out if you need to, it's not a problem. This can really show you guys how this firearm operates. So once we separate the lower from the upper, you can see that the hammer is actually situated to where it pivots downward in the action. So instead of a traditional hammer that falls like this, it actually falls like this. One word of note on these uh, guns that people need to know about is some of the early hammers will allow the bolt to fire out of battery you want to make sure that you have the newer hammer in your gun that has the little tit on the end. All right, you'll see a close-up of that here. Uh, but make sure that you have the newer hammer in your gun so it doesn't fire out of battery. Doesn't happen very often, but you just want to make sure that's not the case with yours. Now, um, the bolt mechanism comes out very simple. You got another pin. And all of these pins are, are the same. So you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up or anything. They're all exactly the same. This whole assembly drops out from the rear. And you can see the unique manner in which this gun operates. Everything pivots downward. So as that bolt mechanism pivots, it goes down in the action. Also, another thing about the Vector that's really neat is the fact that the bolt travel is actually very, very short. So as a machine gun in full automatic, the bolt is only traveling very, very short amount. Just enough to let the cartridge clear and eject, and just enough to strip a new round off the magazine, which makes the stroke very short which makes the cyclic rate very, very high. So we pull the bolt mechanism out. You can see it's very, very simple, extremely simple. That's all it is. So to take the bolt, you just grab it and rotate it, pulls apart, clean it up, 
and you're good to go. For field stripping, that's pretty much about it. All right, let's get this thing back together. Once the bolt mechanism rides back into place, we're just gonna put our pin back in. That holds all the guts in place. And then the upper just drops back on. Now, they do make this gun in a pistol version as well. Um, they're available. And another interesting item about the Vector itself is that not only do you have a pistol version, but the newer versions of the Vector are also um, what they have the enhanced rifle stock, the enhanced version. And it basically has an M4 or otherwise like an AR style hanger. And it'll allow an M4 adapter to drop on and you can run like a little Magpul stock or whatever you want uh, on the back. This is the traditional stock like they ran in the original design. Um, but other than that, this is pretty close to the machine gun, except semi-automatic only. Um, this has been a real joy to shoot today. We've been having a lot of fun with it. But we're going to get back to some of the footage. This thing's been running really great today. So hopefully you guys will enjoy the video as we roll along here. Um, I really am excited about this uh, firearm. It's a very uh, modern and very unique firearm that I believe doesn't really get enough press or enough love. Um, it's really awesome. Uh, I just really can't say enough good things about it in terms of how futuristic it is, the smooth recoil impulse, especially with single shots. Um, the recoil impulse on this thing is just such a charm to shoot, so gentle uh, in your shoulder and everything. And of course, the 45 ACP is definitely not a slouch of a cartridge when it comes to personal defense. So we're going to shoot the gun some today. Hope you enjoyed today's video. All right, we're going to shoot the Vector carbine for you some today. It's been running really nice so far. There's just a lot of things about this firearm that are very futuristic, very modern. Um, you know, the recoil system, obviously, very unique, as you'll see. Um, Safety is located up here, very simple to get to. This version has a folding stock. The barrel on this gun is actually pinned. It's a 16-inch barrel with a pinned fake suppressor. Um, the EOTech is sighted in real nice. Let's run the gun a little bit, just slow fire. Uh, got various targets out here. Let's just have some fun with it. Got little 10-inch uh, plates here. Oh yeah. Man, the recoil impulse on this thing is just so smooth. And make short work of those bogeys at close range. Uh, let's see if we can knock one of our little gophers in the head here. Not one, but two. Awesome. Well, we know it's a gopher hunting rifle inside of 50 yards. Uh, see if we can knock out our two little uh, flip targets right there. Making short work of that stuff. We've got some sodas back here. See if we can take out a few of those. <laughs> Look at that. It hit right in the front and popped towards us. Awesome. One thing I want to note on those soda bottles when we shot them, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the penetrating capabilities of the 45 ACP, you could see that it actually went all the way through the soda bottle, carried all of its energy through, and hit the dirt back behind it. Normally, a lot of times when you shoot an expanding bullet, it'll release all of its energy into the target, and then it'll usually just break into pieces and you won't see it. But in that case, the solid passed all the way through the bottle and hit the burn back behind it. You probably saw the dust kicking up there. All right. We got, a, uh, we got one of these little poppers here at 50 yards. It's kind of a small target. I'm going to take a few shots on the 50 yard first and then try the little bitty popper on the hill. There we go. <laughs> certainly make short work of those. Uh, we got a gong posted at 100. Let's finish out the magazine at 100 yards. All out. Tell you what, this is a really sweet gun. I've been very pleased with it thus far. I'm going to shoot one more mag. 
this gun is just pure fun to shoot. I mean, that, that's just plain and simple. So uh, we're going to pick up the pace a little bit and uh, shoot a few more targets here. Oh yeah, made short work of those, didn't it? Oh yeah. Man, this thing here turns you into the soda sniper. Tell you what, if you're uh, soda sitting around with this thing, you don't want to be near it. All right, let's try our hostage situation. Now, uh, this is something that, of course, we normally botch with a handgun. I don't think we're gonna have a problem with this thing. This time we've got our uh, hostage taker back there. Let's take him out with a nice clean headshot. Uh-huh. You don't mess with this thing. This thing's dead on the money. All right, let's try a headshot out to 50 yards on our big gong on the hill there. See how well we can uh, send her in. Right in the neck. Just missed him. Right in the head. Awesome. Man, this thing is great. Let's try a couple of our small little uh, eight inch plates hanging right here below the uh, gong stand. I think I got a couple left in here. Awesome. You know, this thing is just so much fun. The recoil impulse is just so gentle on it. Doesn't kick hardly at all. I mean, this is a 45 ACP, so you got those uh, 230 grain ball rounds really slinging out of there, and uh, you don't really feel the recoil at all. Um, this would be a really fun SBR to play around with. This is the Vector Carbine. It's got the 16 inch barrel. Um, in a moment here, I'm gonna let Chad have a go on it, but we'll probably go up here and try it out to about maybe 250 yards, 300 yards, and uh, see how well that 45 will just jump right in there at that distance. So. Uh, all right, I'm gonna let Chad have a go here. All right, I'm gonna have a go on the Chris Vector here. Um, as Eric mentioned in the uh, earlier part of the video in the intro, the recoil impulse of this gun is just ridiculously light based on the bolt system. And uh, you can really keep your shots very well on target um, at a close distance or even farther away. Um, the select fire versions of these guns, as you saw in the uh, SHOT Show video that we did out at range day, they actually uh, were putting two shots on target at 100 yards, just <laughs> gun has a two-shot burst, which is amazing, but this gun here is equally nice uh, for civilian purchase, but we're going to have a little bit of fun with it and just uh, shoot some stuff. Let's check it out. Let's try a little gophers down there on the ground. Try a headshot on one of those gophers. I know I can probably nail it. Oh yeah, right in the face. <laughs> this gun just makes such short work of these small targets. Um, we'll try the eight inch place right there hanging up and then probably move up to 50 yards. Try a couple of headshots up there. A little high, a little low. There we go. All right, I'm going to move on up to 50 yards, finish the mag out, then we'll probably try some long range shots at 100 up top. All right, one mag gone. Magazine release is right here at the top on the left side. Load a brand new mag in. Bolt release, this side of the gun. It's ready to fire again. All right, I'm gonna try the 100 yard gong up top. See if we can nail a few shots with that. Man, this thing is just so accurate, it's not even funny. Uh, these 230 grain American Eagle loads really take a minute to carry up there and you notice the uh, travel time. It takes a minute for that sound to come back to us. Uh, let's just finish out the mag on some of the targets up here, probably just run them kind of rapid.
Good shooting, Chad. That's all she wrote. Man, I love this thing. I'm gonna have to uh, borrow it from Eric for an extended stay at my place. I appreciate that, Chad. All right, well, the Chris Vector carbine was doing so well for us at short range, we thought we would back up, shoot it off the bench rest a little bit, and uh, see if we could get some of these 230 grain Federal Ball uh, ammo here to connect on our 18 by 24 inch gong at 200 yards. It's kind of a long way, but we're thinking that it can certainly be done, so we're gonna give it a little bit of a try here. Just see what the gun's capable of. Non-magnified uh, EOTech sight, 200 yards. The wind is blowing pretty hard. I think it's gonna play hell on these uh, 45s here. Well, let's give it a try. Hit the post right below it. Hit the post. Man, it slings them in there. Uh, you're certainly not gonna get it to hit consistent at that distance, but you know, for the most part, it seems like it really launches those, uh, those 230 grain balls in there. It takes quite a while for uh, the sound to come back. Um, but that's 200 yards. I can't really picture the gun being useful for anything further than that, but I do have a similar size target out to 250 yards, and we're gonna try that from here. And if we get any success, we might go ahead and try a couple at 300 you know, just uh, to say we built air castles for the day. All right, let's try 250. Just because I'm feeling adventurous. Might help to have the safety off. Right under it, I'll be dang. Two fifty. <laughs> All right, well, we got a couple of land there at 250, which is very surprising. Uh, the funny part is that I'm actually aiming at the 300 yard gong, which is about 50 yards behind it and about 15 yards offset to the left. I'm gonna try, I know we might be building air castles here, but I'm gonna try to land a few in at 300. We'll see what happens. I'm surprised we connected at two, but the fact that we connected at 250 with the 45 ACP says a lot for the accuracy of this rifle. Uh, I don't know what we're gonna do here, but we're gonna try 300 just for the heck of it, just to say we did. A couple of rounds left here. Wow, this is, <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be fun. All right, so. Oh wow, I got just enough opening to shoot through those trees up there. <laughs> it's going to have to go between the tree branches to hit a 300-yard gong. Let's we'll see if we can do it. Huh. 
<laughs> I hit the ground and then bounced and hit the gong. Did you hear that? <laughs> All right, come on now. Right in front of it. Oh, out of ammo. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I really am surprised that that vector pushed out like that. Okay, the 200, you know, I was a little bit skeptical. 250, even more skeptical. But first shot that I took at 300, it actually went through the tree line and uh, hit the 300-yard gong. I think that's saying a lot for the accuracy of the system. Uh, recoil control, uh, of course, excellent. The trigger, not too bad. Um, the construction of this rifle is actually pretty unique. Uh, the way that the bolt reciprocates downward in the action, um, you know, just helps mitigate a lot of the recoil forces. I think this gun would make a really awesome little SBR. Uh, that might be something that eventually we end up having to do. But I'll tell you what, that accuracy, you can't really lie with that. I mean, that, that's just a, an awesome feat of accuracy for that pistol. Uh, 230 grain, 45 ball, running at about 830, 850. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's a long way for a 230 grain ball uh, to travel out of any, any firearm. We got a four or five mile an hour crosswind here, which of course is gonna play hell on that heavy projectile traveling that slow. Uh, the ballistic coefficient on a 230 grain ball is definitely not what we would consider to be awesome. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video. This should have showed you know, good practical accuracy of the firearm, which is what we you know, try to achieve with our reviews. Um, it's certainly a nice uh, overall rig, very well thought out, very futuristic firearm. Uh, thank you for watching today's video and we'll catch you next time.